Hi and welcome to this video. In this video, let's do an overview of Hestia CP. So in the last video, you saw how to install Hestia CP. Now let's do an overview. So first of all, to log in, if you want to log in, just go to your IP address and then you add the port that you set up. You did see how I changed my port in the installation process. If you didn't watch the installation process, just go back and watch that video. Here you see we have users. This will list the users in your account. Right now I'm using the admin user, which is the default user in your control panel. And then we have web. This is where you will be adding the different websites that you want to run on your HSTR control panel. And you're going to see how to do that in a moment. DNS. So I will not be working with DNS on HSTR CP, but I installed it nonetheless. I'm just going to use Cloudflare for all my DNS records. But if you want to use HSTR CP, you can also do that as well. There's a video I did about child name servers on CyberPanel. And if you watch that video, you're going to see exactly how to do it. And it's the same process on Hestia CP. And then for mail, this is where you're going to see everything about mail. You can create mail. You can see the mail, the different accounts that you have, the different mail domains. You can set them up there. And then databases, you can set up databases. You can change passwords for your databases, users, and so on. All that can be created here. And then cron, you can set up cron and you can see any cron jobs that are available currently and then you can also set up a backup and download the backup and if you want to look at your server details if you want to look at your server details just come here and you're going to see all the details for your server all the processes the jobs that are running you can see all these are currently running i installed multi php and that's why i have all these php versions running here and you can also see that i have nginx and i don't have apache so if you watch this tutorial from the beginning i said i didn't want to install apache i was going to use nginx and php fpm so what else is here if you want to if you want to change any settings about your user just click there if you want to log out you can click there to log out the next thing let's see how you can add a website so the first thing before you add the website make sure that you take your ip address and you create different records you come here to cloudflare if you want to use cloudflare that is add your site here add your domain to cloudflare and then you can add the different records just come here under dns on cloudflare and add the different records you can see here i already have one for my control panel and all the details the different subdomains you can set them up here on cloudflare okay you can see i have an a record i do have a cname for ww and we're going to need that if you want to set up a website on stcp so let's see that let me just give you an overview of how you can set up a new website on a new website on stcp so i'll copy that and let me just come back here and i will go into web so by the time you're watching this tutorial, I will have deleted this server. So you probably won't, you won't get access to any of these IP addresses or any of these links. So if you want to add a website here, maybe you want to host a new website, just click there on add web domain. And actually, this is something that I should cover. You can see you're being told, create a standard user account before adding web domains. So I'm just doing this as a sample. But what you should do first of all is come here under users and then you set up a new user. Okay. So you need to come here and add a user and use that user to set up all your websites or different websites. You can have different users for different websites. Just try not to use the admin user. I'm using the admin just because I don't want to set up all these accounts, but you can set this up if you want to. Just click there on users and look at the admin user. So it is strongly recommended that you create a standard user. Make sure you do that as I've shown you. And for me, I'm just going to click on continue, which is not advised. This is not secure. What you need to do is create a different account that will have your websites or you can even have different users for different websites. So there I will add a domain. So make sure once you create that user, you log in as that user and then you use that specific user to set up your websites. That is for security purposes. So for this, I'll just click on create DNS zones. And this is just to give me the different records that I may need to copy from here and then add them to Cloudflare. So I will enable them. If you want to send and receive mail, just click on enable mail for this domain. That's all you need to change. If you have other IP addresses, they can be listed here. Maybe you bought a different IP from Contabo. It will be listed here and you can set up different sites on different IPs. So I'm just going to click there to save the site. Okay. Once the website has been created, 
you can change different settings that's just because there's a space before this so i'll just remove the space and then once again i'll click there on create dns records and then create and then enable mail and then i will save and now you can see that our domain that has been created successfully if you look here you'll see that we have two we have two websites and we also have one zone so we have a zone for this domain that you created and we have 15 records and you can copy these records into cloudflare so i'll just come here under web and you're going to see how you can you can install your website on this or you can just upload one so for every website that you create you can see you have this you can visit the site you can edit the settings for the site you can access the logs for the site and you can suspend it or even delete it if you don't need it anymore so let's click on it once again and we're going to enable let's encrypt for this website so i'm just going to click on it and before you try to enable let's encrypt ensure that you have set up your a records and you have a ww you have ww record as well okay so you need the a record and the ww record as well so you can set that as a c name you can also set it up as an a record if i want to host wordpress on this website i can change various things here uh, if i come here you can enable web statistics of course you want to see the visits for the site and you can enable statistics authorizations and you can enable domain redirection if you want to redirect this domain somehow maybe you want to redirect uh w redirect visitors to ww redirect all visitors to that you can do that as well and then you can enable ssl so use let's encrypt to enable ssl and then enable automatic https redirection that's going to redirect all traffic to your https domain you can enable strict and most of the times you definitely want to do that just enable http strict because most browsers nowadays support that and then here under advanced you can change various settings just click on advanced and you can choose a template for nginx so if you want to run wordpress you'll need to choose the wordpress template down there and definitely most definitely you want to enable fast cgi and with fast cgi your website is going to load much faster the cache is going to get stored on your server and it's going to reduce the server load the server load generally so what you can do is you can increase this time once you know how often you usually update your website you can even make this one day you can make it one day if you want to because two minutes that's too short and then backend template php fpm which version of php do you want to run if you want to run a specific version you can run that wordpress you can try php 8 for wordpress uh, wordpress already supports php 8 and then you can create a custom document route so you can change the document route where this will be and if you go to the file manager we're going to go there in a moment if you go to the file manager then you'll see it wherever you wherever you decide to put it so if you want to change the direct the directory you can just change the directory there but i don't want to change that i'll just use the default as it is and then you can create ftp accounts for this maybe you want to give access to different people then you can create users and then send these details to those users so that they can log into uh, they can log into the website and set it up so once you've changed and added all the settings that you want to add the next thing that you want to do is you want to come up here and you want to click on save uh, we just need to give it some time for let's encrypt to give us a new certificate this is not secure but if i try to reload it it should redirect us to https okay so the website is there now you can add whatever you want in your site so if you come here under web you can change the different settings again if you want to let's go into files maybe you want to update or uh, maybe you want to install wordpress here you can install wordpress manually okay so if you do want to install wordpress and you know how to install wordpress manually back in the day when we were, we used to install it manually right without the first installation uh, without the automatic installation that we have on most web hosts nowadays we just used to bring the files into the public html here and then you you extract the wordpress files inside there and then 
once you extract the files inside here so remember you go into web into the domain you want to go to and then into public html and then you can bring in the files the wordpress files just extract all of them inside here if you want to exit to control panel you can exit back to the control panel and once you're here so for you to install wordpress let's assume that you've gone under files and you've extracted the wordpress files the next step is for you to create a database or you can do this before you even upload the files so if you go into your db you can create a new database you can add a database make sure that you're using this with a new user that is not the admin user the admin user is default on every hestia control panel so make sure that you don't use it for setting up your sites and anything else that you need for your site so we'll just continue so what you're going to do is you're going to give the database a name let's just call it db2 and remember that this usually takes the username first as a prefix okay so the name for your database will be that depending on the user that you're using so copy the name from there and then of course you want mysql that's the one we installed and then the username for the user the username for the database you can set up a new one and just remember that this is the user now this entire thing the prefix will be the username that you set up so make sure it's something that's unique the username that you set up make it unique Right now we're using the admin user, which is not advised. And then for the password, it will just be the password that you set here. So your password must have strong characters, okay? Once you do that, you, you can change all these other details if you want to change these details about your, your database. And once you set up your database with all the settings, just click there to save and you can connect your database successfully when installing WordPress. And if you want to visit your if you want to visit your database and maybe add import a database you can go to php my admin which is installed by default so if you want to visit php my admin you visit it just visit it through the domain that you set up okay so visit it through that domain if it doesn't work uh, you can try to figure out what the issue is before i end the video i'm trying to figure out what else will be important for you here okay let's go into dns now here under dns you can see we do, we do have one zone, one DNS zone for that. So you can look at the records for this and then you can add those records on Cloudflare. You can just copy them one at a time and add them on Cloudflare if you're using Cloudflare. This is a text record. So you can copy it and add it, add it to Cloudflare, okay? Just copy them as they are and then add them to Cloudflare. Let's see what else is important here before I end the video. Let's go into backups. It's important to have backups. So in this HTCP overview, let's look at backups. You can see we've already set up a new backup here and you can even set up a new backup. Just create a backup. It's going to take a little bit, but my server is currently very small. So this is not really going to take long. So if this was my backup i can download it you can download it and keep it on your on your computer or you can download it and move it to a different server if maybe you're moving from one vps to another you can just download this and then once you've set up once you've set up a new server then you can just import it so to import just google how to import a database you can do it very easily just upload it once you've set up a server like this you can just upload it via, even via ftp and then move it appropriately via ssh and then you'll just run the backup and you can google how to do that there is a very simple one script one line for how to do it on stcp documentation so just google how to do that if you're moving from one server to another so we've looked at db let's look at mail after we look at mail, we're going to see how we can maybe change various settings. Maybe you want to change something in PHP, config file, or you want to change something in Nginx. We're going to see how you can do that. So here, the next step is domain. Maybe you want to add, uh, you want to add mails for this. You can add a mail domain here. So let's click there, add a mail domain. And of course, it is strongly recommended that use a different user. So you can add a mail domain. Let's go back. For that, let's click on this. If you want to add an account, just click on the domain and then you can add an account and you can even edit the mail domain. Mail domain is the domain, like in this case, example.com. Once you add the mail domain, you can add the different mail accounts just like that.
So the next step, let's look at how you can change different settings here. So let's go into our server. So most of this you'll need to do using the admin account. So if you want to restart the server, you can do that. You can look at your server logs. You can see if there are any updates and you can also do monitor the task to see how your resources are being used. You can also configure different things here. Uh, maybe you want to configure all these different items on your server. Just click on whichever, all these items, anything that you want to change here, you can just click maybe web server. You want to edit uh, Nginx, click there and you can configure Nginx backend server php you can configure that to change all these settings but some of this you can just change them through here so maybe you want to change something in nginx you can just come here and you click on edit and that's and that's going to give you that's going to bring you here and you can change the different settings maybe you want to change the max body size maybe your server is, is crashing or timing out due to these times you can increase the different times for this this you may want to increase this maybe to 90 seconds if you are experiencing problems whereby certain scripts are running out of time. So you can change that here. Then gzip, of course, you want to enable that. And then if you want to change the actual settings here, you can just click on. You can just click on advanced down here and you'll be able to click on that. You'll be able to change the settings here. And then once you do that, you can just click on save and it's going to restart Nginx. So let's go back. And uh, if you want to configure, so depending on the PHP version that you're using, maybe you're using PHP 8, you can also configure the settings for that. And it's just the same thing here. You may need to change max execution time for various scripts. You may need to increase memory. Anything that you need to do here, you can just come in here and change them. And if you want to do them on the actual PHP INI file, you can also do that here. So that's just an overview of STSCP and that's pretty much it for this video. So just remember, if you do want to add another website, you can just come in here, click on web, add another website, add the DNS records on Cloudflare and that's going to work for you. So if, you, if you're using a subdomain and you want to add SSL, you can see mine doesn't have SSL yet. Make sure that on Cloudflare, you add another another one like that, okay? www.panel1. So that's required for SSL. You need the www version and the actual A record for that. I hope you understand what I mean, okay? A record for the main domain is that. And then I also have a www record for it. And then for, for this subdomain, I also need a www version for it and you just add it like that, www.panel1. And then you add it as a CNAME record for that. So I hope you understand this, okay? I've done videos about this in the past many times. That's why I'm going fast over this. You can find those videos, especially in the cyber panel tutorial. Just look at the DNS videos. You'll learn a lot there. So if you want to add another website, make sure you add the records there. If you want to reduce the server load on your on your server, just use Cloudflare instead of instead of using your server for DNS. So for this, let's enable enable SSL. And we want to redirect. We want to redirect people to the non WW record. And of course, I'm going to use Let's Encrypt. So as soon as I do that, I can just click on Save. The certificate will be generated for me, and it will be visible on my front end. And if visitors visit my site, they will be redirected to the HTTPS version of my site. So this has been a slightly long video, but I wanted to do an overview of STSCP so that in case I take some time to create other videos, you will still find your way around and you will not be lost in using STSCP regardless of how long it takes me to push out the next video. So I hope this video has been tremendously helpful to you. If you're lost, just go to Google and search for the problem that you're having. The STSCP forum is very helpful and you can also find, you can also find a lot of help on GitHub. Okay, so I hope this video will help you to find your way around STSCP, especially after following along with all the videos that we've done so far.